By request, today we will look at 10 basic ways to get started from scratch if you are new to the idea of prepping. However, whether you are new to the game or you have been doing this for a long time, there may be some things mentioned here that could be a benefit to you, so please do follow along. And for those of you who are more experienced, feel free to add any important information in the comments section down below. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and get started in somewhat of an order. Number one, research. Make a list and check it twice. Know what it is you're getting yourself into. Do your homework on the subject of prepping and survival and determine exactly what kind of scenarios or situations you are prepping for. Ascertain for yourself just how seriously you're going to take this and how far you are willing to go. Ultimately, if it's not that important to you, then you'll just be wasting your time, your money, and your effort. So be sure this is what you want. Find out what you need to learn and what you need to stockpile for just what kind of emergency you are planning for. Number two, make a plan. As the old adage goes, a man without a plan fails before he starts. Now that you have determined that this is what you want, then it's time to plan where and how you will get your supplies, where you will keep them, where and how you will train, and when will you make time for it. If your plan involves evacuation, where and when will you go, and what will you take with you. Write up a small plan for everything, so that you can thoroughly think everything through, and be ready when the time comes. Number three, know where to go. Start figuring out now where you are going to end up during an SHTF situation. Are you going straight home? Are you going to a backup location? Who will meet you there? Do you have a buddy or group to meet up with? And what is the plan? Figure out your evacuation and its routes early before it's too late. Number four, start working out. Ultimately, you are your own best prep. The prepping starts with you. And if you are in bad shape, it will work against you. Start slow and do your best. You may have some medical condition that holds you back. Just do the best you can. But believe me, it is to your benefit to be as fit as possible. Number five, change your diet. Some of you may think this is a bit of an odd choice for this list, but frankly, most people eat garbage, which means they are not nearly as healthy as they think they are. You want to have optimal fitness, then you need to eat healthy. You also need to eat the foods you stockpile in your pantry for emergencies as part of the rotation. You'd be surprised how many people don't or won't eat what they have in their prepper pantry, citing that it's only for emergencies. Number six, run drills. If your plans include a specific type of emergency or involve some sort of evacuation of your primary residence, then it would probably be to your benefit to run drills so that if and when the time comes, you won't be tripping over yourself and become part of the problem. Number seven, training. Once again, you are your own best prep, and one of the best ways you can be prepared is through training. Research various types of training of interest in your area. Many sporting goods stores have outdoor camping and survival classes or hiking trips, for example. Find what's right for you. Now, some training can get expensive, if you can afford it, then go for it. Get the experience. If you can't, there are plenty of online resources and videos out there, but remember, it's not enough to just watch it or read about it. You need to get actual field experience. Knowing how to do something and being able to do it are not the same thing. Number eight, play Santa. That is, have a naughty and nice list of friends and family, because some of these people will understand and others won't. And the ones who don't get it will hold you back by trying to convince you that you're wasting your time. But then they'll turn around and come begging when things get ugly. You need to determine for yourself who will and will not know what you are doing as early as possible. Number nine, make yourself a bug out bag. Now it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to contain all the latest gadgets and the most expensive equipment money can buy. Just the basics will do. There are many videos on the subject out there, including a couple on this channel. Remember, there are no perfect bug out bags. Every bag is different to suit the needs of the individual. 
but whether you plan on bugging out or not, it's a good idea to have one handy. And number 10, try to find a group. Not as easy as it sounds, but there is a benefit to being part of a survival or prepping group, even a small one. There are a lot of benefits here, including training, sharing of resources, and safety during an emergency. Again, it's not always easy to find a good group. You may have to start one yourself, but it's definitely worth looking into. There are a lot of preppers who plan on going the way of the lone wolf, and that's fine, but not really recommended. And you just knew I had one more for you, didn't you? Call it number 11 if you will. Round yourself off. That is, try to be as well-rounded as possible. The more skills you can acquire, the better off you will be in an emergency or a disaster. And some of these could be quite simple. For example, can you ride a bike? Can you swim? Can you sprint? Can you make a water filter? Could you walk 10 to 20 miles if you had to? Get out there and test your limits then push past them. So I hope you found this list helpful. If you have anything you would like to add to the list, feel free to post it in the comments section down below. If you would like to help this channel out, it would sure be appreciated. ScrewTube doesn't like channels like this, and they have been making it increasingly difficult. If you would like to help, please see the links down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up, share it if you can, and subscribe if you are new. Check out some of the other videos if you haven't, you may see something you like. I hope that you do. So as always, stay frosty, folks, and thanks for watching.